community, Team Redstone, is as informed as possible of everything and anything that's going on on the yard so that, that you know, might be of public interest, and this is certainly one of them. And this is a good news story. Uh, over time, since 1941, and you see some of the historic examples here, uh, you know, the arsenal whole purpose was to augment the munitions production of Aberdeen proving grounds. And like the folks from the Tennessee Valley have proven over time, they eventually figured out a way to do it better. Uh, and started out producing them. And so, when, so they produced a, a, a various a types of munitions out there, and some contained chemical agents. One of the chemical agents was uh, was mustard gas, which it's not really a gas, it's a gel, but you know, I'll let Terry get into the specifics of how that all uh, unfolds. But at the conclusion of the war, we brought back all of those, plus all of the ones that we captured uh, uh, in Germany and, and um, Italy and, and, and the other uh, nations that opposed us at the time, and to A, do what we still do today, reverse engineer them, understand their capability, and then dispose of them uh, uh, as, as, as the protocols at the time allowed. And so the protocols at the time allowed us to empty out the munition bodies. Uh, they, did, they had a chemical agent. Uh, take those to another place that could, you could properly um, incinerate or dispose of those. And then we buried the munition bodies with mortar shells and the, and the bombs here on the arsenal. And in one place, there's six, six miles of trench line that run concurrent or parallel to um, sort of in the middle of the arsenal. But that's not the only place that we're interested in. These maps show various number of sites that we're interested in and in, uh, restoring uh, to its closest to its original condition as possible. One reason is because it's the right thing to do. And, and we know better how to dispose of this stuff than we did back in the 40s and 50s. The second reason <coughs> is, is there's some of this stuff we want to use for other places. And you can't do it if it's contaminated with, uh, with uh, hazardous waste. And so back in 2009, we brought a, particular, a specific machine uh, to the installation called the Explosive Disposal System. Uh, and we're bringing it back this time. And the reason we're bringing it back this time is because we're a little bit farther along in our uh, uh, remediation process or our restoration process. Uh, the team has done an extensive research of all the literature that's available, the classified documents as well as the unclassified documents, conducted interviews as to where all that stuff was, the number of rounds that came in the installation, the number of rounds that came out, the number of rounds that were detonated. And they have a pretty good idea of where all this stuff is. So now we're going into the, into the part where we're going to do an intrusive, intrusive inspection, and, and hopefully we're going to find what we're looking for. We're going to find that stuff as we dig down into those sites and pull up, hopefully, you know, one of these munition bodies to validate that we, we're digging in the right area. And so, what do you do with it when you find it? We've got to dispose of it, and that's what this machine's going to do. And I'm going to let Terry Del Paz uh, and talk to you about the technical piece of it. Uh, and please ask every question you can possibly ask. And, and at the end of the day, I want you to leave informed. And if you have further questions afterwards, Terry Stover's in the back. Wait, wait your hand. She will, she's going to take all your questions and she'll get back to you if you have another question uh, that you thought about on your way home or as you discuss it with your friends and neighbors. So, without further ado, our lead scientist is Terry Delapaz. Hey guys, we appreciate you coming out today. I'm Terry Delapaz with the uh, Restoration Branch here at Redstone. I've been with the Restoration Branch since 1995, so we've been very long time. Um, Colonel March talked to you a little bit about the history of Redstone. And this shows the general locations of the various um, uh, agencies or departments that were out here in the 1940s. So this is early 1940s. You'll see the, uh, the warfare depot here at the bottom, the uh, ordnance plant here, and Huntsville Arsenal up uh, towards the north. The Huntsville Arsenal was where the chemical agents were produced. The ordnance department was where the ordnance was put together. The, uh, the uh, munitions were railed over up to the arsenal, filled with the agent, railed back to the ordnance department where the fuses and the finishing touches were put on. Then they were sent over to the Temple of Warfare Depot and shipped overseas to Europe in support of World War II. After World War II, those items came back from theater 
came into the Gulf War chemical, the Gulf War chemical depot. And that's, as Karl Marx explained, that that's where the agents were, the items were opened up, the agents drained out, the bodies buried on red zone in various locations, and the agents were bulked up in drums or tongue containers, taken to other installations, Pine Bluff primarily, and where they sat until they were disposed of just the last few years. The uh, cleanup program here is, is large. We have a huge cleanup program at Redstone Arsenal, and only a few of the sites deal with chemical agents. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the rest of the story. We're going to spend most of our time tonight on the chemical agent cleanup that we're doing, the recovered, um, the recovered munitions that we're getting ready to dig up and deal with. But as you can see on this side, we've got 400 sites on that side. And this does include the NASA area. Um, some of the NASA sites are on this list. This comes straight out of our permit from the state of Alabama. The state of Alabama issued this permit in 2010, and we are cleaning up now under the auspices of the state. We, um, prior to that, we also we were under the state and EPA. Now we work strictly with the state. And the state, of course, is overseen by EPA. But we work with the state to do our cleanup program here. So in other words, the state is the organization that is approving all of our cleanups and um, puts them under permit. And that's the reason we're here tonight is because we are in the process of permitting the explosive destruction system. Uh, you can see on various boards around the room. And we're bringing that system back down to Redstone to dispose of any items that we find when we do our intrusive investigation starting next summer. And we don't, and we don't think that we're going to find a whole lot of them at that time. We're doing trenching, uh, open test pitting to see what's in those trenches. We're not in the, we're not ready to go digging up those trenches and pulling everything out at this point in time. We're opening specific test pits in certain areas just to find out if what we think we know about what's in those trenches is actually what's in those trenches. So once we confirm that, then we can design how we want to do the actual removal of all of those items uh, starting, I think, at 2017? I think we start in 2017 is when we'll actually start the first of those removal actions at those sites. Um, going back to, I'll go back to the first slide. As you can see from this side, I think you can't see it very well. It's too bright up here. But then we have 171 sites that we're done with. We've cleaned up. They're on the no further action list with the state. We have 221 sites that are still working. So, you know, we're getting close to halfway done. So we're marching there probably fairly quickly. We've got... A total of 3,051 acres that we've got, to, we've got to remediate. And we've cleared... Uh, 372 of them so far. 372 and acres see, already, no further action required. So they are making a lot of great progress. Now, the majority of these sites, the 221 sites, the majority of those sites contain... Uh, contaminants such as solvents and metals and perchlorates, things like that, not chemical munitions. The, uh, the, the only 17 <coughs> of these sites have, uh, we expect to have potential chemical agent uh, ordinance in them. There's a few others that, that we think we might encounter some chemical agent from areas where it was produced, but not put into the ordinance yet, just maybe with under salts and things like that under some of the production facilities. So those, those are the, and that might be another three, four sites. So right around 20, 21 sites total out of the all 405 do we expect to encounter any kind of agents. Okay. Are you basically fully, from what you can see, you're fully funded for all the cleanup? We are not having problems getting funded. So it's a billion dollar project and we're no. about three, 300 million into it? We, Numbers are up there, yes. 331 million to date. Um, we, of course, it's not all thrown at us at one time. We're yeah. funding as we go along because you know, there's only so much work we can do. Because you know, you've got producer reports, the state has to read them, the state has to make comments. And, you know, we go back and forth with them in some of the documents, and then they approve the, the investigation document. 
And then we write a design document, and then the state, we go back and forth with the state on, you know, do we have everything in place to do the cleanup? You know, is this, this design good enough to go in the field and work clean up? And then we go out and clean it up, and then write a closure report, and all that has to happen before we can be put in no further action. <laughs> Now some of the sites here were very simple, you know, maybe it's got a little bit of um, metals on the surface and those, you know, are easy to run out and, and dig up and clean up. Others are a whole lot more complicated. We've got um, solvents in the groundwater and, you know, we're up by, they're underlain by karstic so hydrogel. So your mission is all encompassing all of Redstone, which yes. would include NASA sites. Yes, sir. some of the NASA sites now. NASA does their own program and has some of their own sites, but we have about 30 sites that are located on their facility. Most of them are chemical agents, but some of them are chemical agent sites that the Army just needs to deal with. Now, it's not really something that NASA has the expertise to deal with, and so we are dealing with those types of sites. Uh, two or three production areas and um, another two or three disposal areas. As a matter of fact, the first site that we're going to be cleaning up under this usually the EDS floor is one of those sites in the NASA area. Okay, thank you. Alright, the, um, the bedrock underlying redstone is highly karstic, which means that it's got a lot of fractures, um, caves, crevices, uh, bedding plane fractures, which means that the groundwater flows uh, like, um, like think of a building with a piping system, you know, that flows down this pipe and over this way and down this way and over this way. So that's kind of how the bedrock works here at Redstone. So the, the groundwater with the contaminants flow down one, you know, one uh, a crevice or a crack, gets to a bedding plane, spreads out, and goes back down another bedding plane and maybe going this way this time. And so it's, it's, uh, it's a very complicated groundwater system out here. So what we have done to try to turn over a lot of the surface area back to the arsenal for reuse is we have designated surface media sites and groundwater sites. So the surface media sites, we've been marching out pretty smartly on and that's where we've turned over our, our acreage back to Colonel Mart so that you can put it back into the inventory to be reused as the time comes. Matter of fact, the Raytheon facility, if you're familiar with the Raytheon facility that was built just a few years ago, three or four years ago, maybe five, I don't remember now, but recently. That's, there was four or five sites underneath that facility that we were able to clean up, work with the state now just to clean up so that facility could be built. And we're awfully proud of that. Like that. Well, this big here, and I'll point it out in just a minute, I've got it up here too. But uh, going back to that harsh hydrogeology, the, uh, what happens is that we've got groundwater that flows far away from the sites. So if you have a source area in one, in one location, my contamination may be daylight way yonder. So we've got, you know, we put a bunch of wells out here to find out where that's going as best we can. You know, we put dye traces out here, we've done some seismic studies, find, find these cracks, these, these fault lines, and we put a lot of fault in, in, the, in the bedrock underneath the rest of them. And we have hit the surface areas pretty hard, trying to get those cleaned up where the contaminants are in the soils. So the thought being if we can get the contaminants up out of the soils and it's no longer sourcing the groundwater. And that's our biggest bang for the buck because we got a lot of, of um, wetlands and various things out here at Redstone that help us naturally attenuate a lot of the contaminants. So if we can get the contaminant levels low enough in the groundwater, then the natural bugs and stuff can start chewing on what's left. So that's where our focus has been is to try to get those big source areas going. Um, and it doesn't mean that we won't be doing some other polishing uh, stuff with the groundwater to make sure it gets down to the you know, drinking water. But we've got to clean our, our groundwater up drinking water levels. And that's part of what the state of Alabama requires, and that's what we will do. But it's just going to take time. So we'll get it down to a certain level as best we can, and then uh, monitor it, make sure it doesn't come into contact with anybody, or nobody's screwed together, you know, make sure everybody's safe in the community and on the rest of the while we continue to Ma'am, have you start begin cleaning up any chemical weapon site, contaminate sites yet, as of? No, sir. Okay. You know, what we have done is identified where they're located, and we've done some geophysics to find out where the trenches are exactly, and have put markers and fences around them to keep our workers safe. So 
of the Beta worm hunters in particular, because most of these sites are on remote areas. And so we you know, make sure that it's, it's marked, clearly marked. And we've done some groundwater sampling around it and things like that to make sure that we're not having um, a huge migration of some, something that would be you know, of concern. Done our best to protect people, but we still the, the concern from the state is that these these guys they're, these ordnance items they're in the ground and buried in these trenches, and they may not be leaking now, but they've been in the ground 60 years, they're going on about 60 years, and the state is concerned about rusting. You know, they may rust in the future and, and release whatever might be still in, in them, you know, whatever. Because the, when they were put in the trenches, they were. Um, you know, C4, other uh, explosives were put all around them and they were lit up, okay, burned, you know, then it was covered back up. So what we're expecting to find is a whole bunch of metal scrap you know, and things like that's what, what we're really, really, truly expecting to find. There might be a few items that didn't get destroyed in that process and that's where this EDS comes into place so they find one. So they use the old-fashioned EDS system. Yes, yes, right. But well, for the, for the investigation, for the intrusive investigation, because we're not really expecting to find a whole lot in, this, in the investigation phase. You know, we're really just, this is an investigation just to you know, ground proof what we think we know. Because we don't, you know, we're going to be doing, quite frankly, this at nighttime. You know, when all the workers are off post and that sort of thing. So we'll be those crazy folks out there in the middle of the night <laughs> with, you know, all our lights and everything set up. and. You're, Just wait to us you You're going to tell us about how much, how many acreage is involved, or particular areas that might be chemical weapons contaminated uh, in this. Uh, for instance, like Lewis site, or or uh, any sarin agents, or or uh, mustard agents. You're going to get in specifics of that during so your presentation. For security purposes, I can give you an area where it is, but I'm not going to point to it. No, I, I'm not asking. I'm just curious about acreage, acreage, okay. acreage. Do you have a footprint or a map for the groundwater distribution that oh. you can share? Okay, it's it's well, two, different, two different things. The, the uh, ordinance, the issues with the buried ordinance hasn't really impacted groundwater. Right. So I don't have a lot of plume or, plume or contamination in the groundwater associated with what we're getting, what we're talking about tonight, digging up those buried. Where the plumes are associated are old production areas right. and things like that. And I don't like know that I've got, is, is there any of those fact sheets? Do you those fact sheets have in there? We've got some. Look in the box, Clint. That's out there. It's not a, it's not a secret. I can no. give you the information, but I don't know that I brought it tonight. Mm -hmm. We're trying to focus How far will we focus, focus yeah. this meeting on that, that level of detail? Matter of fact, we stood and looked at that poster yeah. tonight and thought, yeah. Yeah, you know, no, let's just, you know, we're, not, we're focusing on the word, the chemical agent stuff tonight. We'll leave it a different. So we don't have, we don't really have an acreage in a lot of it. I'm, I'm Jason Watts. I'm the site manager for, for a lot of these sites. I, I work for Terry. Uh, we estimate six miles, to answer your, your question specifically, we estimate six miles on the arsenal that could have trenches. Uh, there would be a couple of different ways to, to measure your question. One that it's acreages for how, how many sites are in, in, the, um, in the program itself that would be uh, Contaminated with agent, or, or, or have that 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 type of focus where we would have to consider all those things, and we can get that information to you if you wanted to put that out. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, we just don't. I don't have those numbers right now. Hey, for me, but I mean, so you've already tested. You haven't tested, the, or you have tested the ground for like arsenic in the case of Lewisite or or pH. You, you've already done pH testing for the mustard agents. Limited. 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 Almost Limited. all of them have been sampled for mustard. We don't find much of the mustard. We found a little bit of breakdown product, which doesn't carry the same toxicity as the mustard itself. But we have found in a few instances, two or three instances, that we do have some thiodide problem. Like we have to, in order for us to dig, we have to have all the, the storage and for the permit mod for the storage and the destruction system that we do find in things. Because the way the, the way the Army and we deal these safety draws the lines that if you just scratch the surface, that's called an intrusive investigation. So we have to have all of this ready before we can go and really
do a true investigation to find out what we're having. Even though we just might be digging a small pit to try to get a profile of that trench, we have to be ready that we're, we're going to find something. The state makes us be prepared. The uh, Department of Defense Safety makes sure. So that's why we've got limited sampling in, in these areas that are trying to get the program built up so that we can be more aggressive in, in our next phases and, and work on those designs, as Terry was saying, that to go and, and, and build the remediation and, and design the remediation. Now, Jason's going to talk after me. Jason's going to talk, and he's going to talk in detail about the process that we're going through and how we're getting ready to 